Hello and welcome to a very special love talk. And special because today we're going to be showing you an event that happened a few months ago mm -hmm. called Love Talk Live, filmed in front of a live audience. It was a very, very good evening where we shared many tips with our viewers on how to have a successful relationship. So for the next 45 minutes, pull a chair, sit on your sofa, get ready <laughs> and enjoy these tips to make your relationships better with a special Love Talk Live. Mm -hmm. If you want to truly find happiness, in your love life, whether happiness for you means to save your marriage, because happiness can mean different things to different people, depending on the situations they're in. Do you agree with me? So if I am married and my marriage is on the brink of divorce, happiness for me means to be able to save my marriage. If I am single and looking for someone for a while, then happiness for me means to find the right person and also to be the right person. Is that right? I want to talk to you today about a commandment. A commandment is something you can't escape. You, you cannot hear a commandment and want to do things differently because it doesn't work that way. The word itself, commandment, means that you don't have an option, but to do what? To obey is like, is like the law. Do you have an option to obey the law? No, you have to obey it. And I want to talk to you. I'm actually going to go over the first few commandments, the first three commandments we spoke about recently in the love therapy. So the first one we spoke about was, you shall not blame anyone for your suffering. And we spoke about that, why? Because many people, when a relationship breaks down, they blame everybody. They blame the person that they were with because they, you know, they weren't good enough. They weren't doing things a certain way. They blame their parents. They say, I came from a broken home, so it's their fault. But usually, few people look at them to see where they went wrong. And, and finding out where you went wrong is very important. The second one was, you shall not separate yourself from the author of love. The third one, you shall change for yourself, not for anybody else. And this is why some people, they learn something in the love therapy or in a counseling session with a the pastor. They try to change but they are hoping that the other person notices they change. And if the other person doesn't, doesn't notice anything or doesn't say anything, then they get frustrated and they stop because they were never changing for themselves. They were changing for somebody else. And if the person doesn't notice, then they say it's not worth it because he should have noticed, she should have noticed. So we were explaining that you have to change for yourself. So before we put the fourth commandment there, when have you have you seen um, beauty pageants on TV? Okay, so when there's a beauty pageant, they take the the beauty queen, or she's ho she's hoping to be a queen, and usually they ask, "What is it that you want the most?" So if they ask out of ten beauty contests or contestants, what is it that you want the most? Most of them will give always one answer. What is that? How did you know? Did you take part? <laughs> most of them will say, I want world peace. Of course we know because it's a politically correct answer for them to give. But we know one of the things that the world fights the most to have is peace. Actually, most wars happen with a, a, a pretext because people want what? Peace. So they think that they have to fight to have peace. And in relationships, most people, most people who are dating, most people who are married, they also want peace. 
When you first get married, when you first start dating, peace is easy because you never really do anything to, to hurt the other person. You don't feel comfortable to do that yet. So you, what you do in the beginning when you, when you date is you say a lot of good things to the person. Even if the person's hair looks horrible, you say, you look beautiful. Because you don't feel comfortable yet to say certain things. In a way, it's good, in a way, it's bad. It's good because you never, you never have arguments, because you avoid those arguments. It's bad because the person never really knows what you truly feel or think inside. So one of the biggest problems that happen in marriages is the lack of peace because of arguments, because, you know, people fight, and people fight for various reasons. We're going to go into that in a moment. But if you want peace, you don't stumble upon peace. You don't walk, you're not walking down the road and you, you trip because you found peace. You can even pray for peace, but prayer, even though prayer is important, prayer doesn't always bring peace. Peace has to start somewhere. So let's give the example first with those who are single, and then I'll, I'll get my wife to help me in a moment when we talk with those, about those who are married. When, when you're single, where does peace have to start? First of all, if you're single, peace has to start inside of you. And then, of course, when, when we talk about relationships, when we talk about marriage, I want to I get my wife to help. And please, Lena, can we get another microphone? Please. When we talk about marriage, we were, we were saying just now that, you know, in, in, sometimes for certain countries to find peace, what do they do first? What do they do? They go to war. But that doesn't mean that for you to find peace, you have to go to war with your partner. And usually people fight about two kinds of things. Pay attention in this. The first kind is people usually fight about, forgive me, but stupid things. For example, Elaine and I, we never really fought about this. We used to fight about other things. But we, we never usually really fought about this. But I'm bringing this up because you'd be surprised how many couples fight about this. And if you're married, perhaps you fought about this. And I, I used to tell her to complain about the way she used to squeeze the toothpaste. Because I like to squeeze the toothpaste. In my mind, it, it makes perfect sense to squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom. <laughs> Do you agree with me? <laughs> Thank you. You see? <laughs> okay. All right. We've got some toothpaste people in the house. Let's not get sidetracked. Okay, pay attention. In my mind, it makes sense to squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom because as the tube runs out, the toothpaste is always at the top. Okay. But Elena, she just squeezes whatever, you know, if it's at the top, at the bottom. <laughs> We never really argued about this, never. But I used to tell her, come on, please, you know, is it too hard to? But we know of couples that have had serious arguments about this. Another pointless thing to argue about. I mean, pointless, I understand it's convenient if the guy does that. I'm saying the guy because usually it's the guy. But it's pointless. Is that the toilet seat is not down, right? Yes, and other things, and, and, and people still, you know, people like you said, by the way, good evening everyone, um, they do argue about very trivial things, but you know this thing of the toothpaste was just a little something, because there were many toothpaste arguments, if you know what I mean, you know, little things like this, mm -hmm. because of his personality and how he was brought up. So. Usually couples, they, they fight about very small things. They, they, they won't let go until they prove that they are right. Yeah. And, and, and that's the problem. So trivial things, toothpaste, the toilet seat, because the toilet seat is not down. Or, you know, the guy was, was going to put his socks in the hamper, and instead of going there, he was playing basketball. He did this, fell, fell on the outside. He didn't pick it up. 
It's, it's a nuisance. But that's nothing that's going to break up your marriage. Do you understand? Yes or no? It, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, it's going to, if the lady is going to take maybe 30 seconds of your time and the man should be considerate to indeed go there and, and do 30 that. 30 seconds or 20 years of doing that every single yes, day. Yes, yeah, as well. <laughs> but of course, the guy should be more considerate, the lady should be. But the point is, if we start an argument about this, who wins? It's not just a matter of nobody wins. It's, it's a pointless argument because it's a lot easier and quicker for whoever notices the problem to go there and fix it than to argue about this. And I, I want to show you a video that's going to make you understand that. And then we're going to talk about the, the serious problems that take away the peace. Do we have the video? There. Please. Uh, pay attention to this, to this two minute video. Go there. Let's stay there so we don't block them. Go ahead. This boy's going. Oh, it's raining. No. Hey, it's Wiggle Wiggle Wiggle. 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 No. Hey, it's raining. No, it's raining. No, it's raining. No, it's raining. My mom told me it was raining. It was raining. S stop no. there for a second. Yes, so she's saying, it's raining. And he said, it's twinkling. It's raining. Keep going. No, my mom told me it was wiggling, not it's, raining. No, my mom said it was raining. No, my mom told me it was wiggling. Because my mom, my mom said it's raining. No, my mom said it's raining. My mom said it's raining. Is say sorry to me My mommy is wiggling. My mommy is not. My mommy is now, Sunny. My mommy is No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, you're pretty. And you're not real. I'm real. Rocks, rocks. We're going to go out there and see. said, you broke my heart. <laughs> so every, one there, so every, every pointless argument ends like this. It's pointless. Okay. And then it goes on and on and on. And one of them always gets upset, or the two get upset. Mm -hmm. And why are we saying this to you? Because you, you say that you want peace, but peace has to start somewhere. One of you, if you're arguing about something trivial that doesn't make sense, one of you has to make peace. Mm -hmm. And it's not about, I was talking to Elaine about this, it's not about you letting the person win, DR. It's, it's, there's no win or lose. It's you understanding that if I keep going on about this, I, I'm causing a problem. Let me, let's just drop this. I'll go there and put the toilet seat down. I'll go there and, and, and like Bishop Junior said last time to, to, to me, not because of me personally, but he said, just solve the problem by two toothpaste tubes. And then you can squeeze from the middle, from the bottom, from the top, you choose. But you, you, you solve the trivial problem. But a lot of arguments start because of something trivial, because one of them didn't want to back down, he didn't want to be the peacemaker. And that's not it. While you are argue, arguing, you say things that you will regret. And you're going to leave marks on the other person that you cannot, you can't take words back. So you, it all starts as a very small thing, but then look at what, what happened. And then 
There's always the one who is too proud to apologize and to make things right. And usually, it, it never ends. Usually, it used to be me, right? Indeed. Usually, it, it's the man. <laughs> usually, it's the man who doesn't like to say I'm sorry. Yeah. For something, I don't know why, but... for something silly, something <laughs> stupid, right? But then, when the person, because being a peacemaker is a choice that you make. You have to make a choice that an argument will not start, nor stem, nor end with you. An argument will not pass through you. You have to make a decision that you're not going to allow something like that to, to cause an argument, to destroy your marriage. Because at the end of the day, you know, you, you spend three, four days without talking to each other. When a simple, you know, it's okay, I'll, I'll go there and solve the problem, would have solved everything. And you would have spent two days three, four days that you didn't spend talking to each other, you would have been having a, a blast, enjoying each other's company. Does that make sense? And, and of course, just before we go to the problems that are serious, it's also important to say that when we, we spoke about the countries that go to war to find peace, the war is the war against yourself. Because we never like to back down from an argument. Right? The kids were saying, rain. The other one was saying, twinkling, <laughs> trickling, I don't know. Trickling, twinkling, rain. And, you know, the girl could have just said, or the boy could have just said, yes, it's raining. It's the same thing. It's wa water from the sky. It's raining. It's wet outside. It's wet outside. <laughs> Finished. That's it. Mm -hmm. Then he wouldn't have said, you broke my heart. <laughs> And that's what many couples do. The, the argument goes on and on. And it only stops when one has a broken heart and oh, cries. Is tired of arguing. Yeah. You know? And this is pretty much all to do with pride. It's that thing, that old same thing that we've been talking about in our previous seminars. It's the not, want to, not wanting to let go. You know, maybe even if the person is wrong, you know, you are working together. You're not against each other. Mm -hmm. So why don't you, because the thing is, when, when people argue, when couples argue, it's like the, the brain switch off, switches off. No one is thinking anymore. They're just talking. And they're not even getting through to each other anymore. Because if you, if you were to stop the fight, they wouldn't even remember what the other one was saying. And then, and then they think that to get through to each other, they have to, to shout louder. But they're actually losing. It's like the louder you shout, the, they think that you listen the most, which mm -hmm. usually is, is not the true. When, when your TV is really loud, what do you do immediately? Switch it off <laughs> or you put it down. So let's talk now about the, the serious problems that take away the peace from a relationship. And I want you to remember something. Somebody has to be the peacemaker. Someone has to be. Someone has to have that role. But it's always me. Congratulations. Well done, because someone has to be the voice of reason. Someone has to be the one who's going to bring down, who's going to simmer things down. So, but just like there are trivial things that take away the peace from, from a relationship, there's also serious things, serious problems that take away the peace from a relationship. For example, you know, you, you have there on your Facebook, you have there on your Twitter, whatever social media that you use, you have friends that you know your partner wouldn't approve. You, you, you have passwords that you don't want your husband, your wife to know. That's going to cause a problem, and that is a serious problem. That's going to take away the peace, and that is a, that's not a trivial problem. That's going to be something which will cause a rift between you and your partner. And if you know that this is there, you have to make a decision to get rid of that. Absolutely. You know, some people are even afraid to confront the other person about the problem. Mm -hmm. Because they, they put themselves so low that they think, you know what, it's better to be with someone like this. At least I'm not by myself. And this may shock you, but this happens a lot, especially 
or with women and also men, because we, we say often that men, women are abused, but men are also abused. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of abuse. The wife or the husband going out with someone else behind your back, I mean, you kind of know that something's going on, but you feel afraid because your, low, your, your self esteem is so low that you are so afraid to confront the person. And, and that takes away the peace because you feel you can't trust the person. Or, you know, the list is endless. Sometimes it's something you think is trivial, but it's not trivial. Sometimes you, you talk to your partner in a certain way that puts her down, that puts him down. And you think, no, this is just how I am. I am I'm very honest. I'm very honest. What I have to say, I say it. You are not honest. You are... Um, what, Destroying. What's the worst word for unpolite? Unpolite is too smooth, too, too, too good. You're rude. You are more than rude. What else are you? <laughs> huh? Disrespectful. And, and you think, no, but for example, the guy thinks, no, but she's, she's the woman. I, I can't talk to her like that because I'm the leader of the house. You can't. And if you don't mind me adding, you are giving the example of the man the way he speaks to the woman, but there's also the other side. A woman who is with someone, dating someone or married with someone, that the guy is the, kind of, is the quiet ki kind of guy. So she talks, she, she talks to him in a way that completely, completely destroys his confidence as a man. And that's also bad, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's not only the other yeah. way, but I just would like to mention this one because this is... For example, this is not just for those who are married. You who are single or you're dating someone. If you're single, you're going to be dating at some point. <laughs> what happens? The, the period of, of dating is for you to evaluate the relationship with the person, to see if that person's good for you. And sometimes something happens in the relationship. You see the person disrespecting you. You see the person shouting at you. You see the person lying. And you see all these things that you know will take away your peace if you get married. But because you think, if I let go of this person, I'm going to be on my own, then you carry on in that relationship, even though you know that this person disrespects you. Even though you know this person doesn't treat you the way they should treat you. Even though you know they lie to you. So how can you expect to have peace if you see all these signs of something that is not right, that you need to do something about, but you're ignoring it because you don't want to be alone. You say, Pastor, but I waited so long to be with someone. If I let go of this person, I'm going to have to wait again. Yeah, it's on. And you know what will end up happening if you do what he just said? It's going to accumulate inside of you. You're going to become this bitter person this tra traumatized person, full of negativity inside. You're gonna feel like you are worth nothing, but you still smile as if nothing was happening. You, you have a boyfriend, you go together, you go out on Friday nights or whatever. You've got someone by your side, but only you know what you go through inside. You make yourself this big because you want so much to be in a relationship. And, and of course, we were saying earlier, that if you're single, you need to have peace, inner peace that God gives you. Remember that. You have to have that. But of course, if you don't have that, you're dating someone, you don't have inner peace, then you're not even going to notice that this person does all these things that are not good, that will affect you in the future. You don't even pay attention to that because you don't have inner peace. You don't know what peace feels like, what it's like. So you don't know. I, I want you to remember this. Someone has to be what? A peacemaker. Someone has to be the peacemaker. Who is that someone going to be? You, I know that some of you, for example, your partners are not here tonight. You can't expect them to be the peacemakers because they're not listening to this word. You are. So you're going to have to be the peacemaker from tonight. You're going to have to make a decision to say, I will start being someone who will bring peace who will not accept arguments and fights, and who will keep the peace. It's as important to make peace as it is to keep the peace. Actually, sometimes it's more important to keep the peace because to keep the peace is, 
is long term. It's very easy for England, the US, to send an army to a country and, and try to destroy the rebels in the country, and then they just get out of there and let them to, to, to do things by themselves. Sometimes it doesn't work, because to keep the peace is hard. You have to, you know we were talking about wars. It's a war every day for you not to start an argument. It's a matter of choice, really. Mm -hmm. you, you choose, hold on, is it really worth it? Okay, he said something to me that, you know, maybe he wasn't thinking, you know, be merciful towards people. Because you also say things that you don't mean sometimes, you know, when you are angry or something. So just think about it before you actually go into an argument and then you get yourself so hurt that it's so hard for you to go back and, you know, and to keep the peace, sometimes you have to really try hard to understand that person. Because it's very easy to misunderstand them, to misinterpret what someone says. It's very easy to do that. People fight because of their selfish reasons. Have you ever seen someone fighting because they like each other very much? <laughs> no, I, I love you so much! No, I like you more. No, I like you more! <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen that? <laughs> that doesn't happen. Every time you have a fight, for example, why did those kids fight? <laughs> one was saying, my mom said it's raining. The other one said, my mom said it's twinkling. <laughs> they wanted to prove the mom was right. Well, I mean, how does that affect the world? Does that affect the world in any way, whose mom was right? No, and usually you fight because of that. You, that's with the trivial things. And with the serious things that we mentioned, perhaps the way you treat your partner, perhaps the way that the fact that you don't want to recognize that that relationship that you're dating is not working. You see all the signs, but you, you pretend to be blind. You don't want to notice that. Perhaps because you're hiding, you're lying to your partner. You know. It's hard for you to accept that you're wrong. It's hard to say, I have to be the one starting this change. I have to be the peacemaker. But once you do that, you are on your way to, to having a relationship the way that God meant it to be, with the foundation of love. And it gets easier. Mm -hmm. The more, isn't it, James? You can speak for yourself, because when you started saying, No, you speak for me, go ahead. You can see, because when he started apologizing more, it became easier, so now he apologizes more often. Sometimes I don't really apologize, I just do this. <laughs> so, okay. it's the same. So, as, you know, the more you do it, the more you humble yourself. You know, the more the other person will respect you. I respect him even more for him to say sorry. Even sometimes I was wrong. But, you know, for peace sake, and, you know, for, not, for, for us not to waste time and spend the whole day without talking to each other, you know what, and then, let's talk and apologize. And, and then what, what we do, even if I say sorry, but even if she's wrong, just to end the thing, I say sorry, we finish, and then the, a day later I'll come back and say, look, you know, Len, we were, you know the exactly. argument we had the other day, it's, it's very important that we do this and this instead, da -da. and my friend, then the problem solved. Mm -hmm. But someone had to be what? The peacemaker. The, peacemaker. <laughs> the fourth commandment is, you shall be of what? Peace. You shall be of peace. If, there's, if, there was a, if someone started an argument, it wasn't you. But the argument will not carry on because you chose to carry on. And I know that this may be difficult. This may be, you know, you may not succeed in being this person of peace overnight. It starts with a decision, like Elena said. You make a decision to be this person who is of peace, who is a peacemaker. And sometimes maybe you... You, you may fail, you may, you know, trip, but you get back up, right? A person who is quitting an addiction, when, when they are quitting that addiction, they may have a relapse, but they get back on the horse again, and they keep trying until they are free. Same thing for our love life. And, and sometimes all it takes is for us to swallow our pride and to accept that we don't have all the answers. We, we're not always right. We may be right sometimes, but even when you're right, Sometimes it's okay to let things go. Just let it go. Just let it go. It's not worth it.
it's not worth it. If, if someone comes to fight you in the street, someone comes to rob your wallet, you have your wallet there and someone has a gun pointed to your head to take your wallet, is it worth you fight with a person? Because if you fight, he might shoot you. He might, he might not. But what's more precious, a hundred pounds you have in your wallet or your life? So just sometimes, just let it go. Let it go, you know, just drop it. Isn't that how they say it? Just drop it. Because what matters is that you kept the peace. And like we said, you can always go back the next day when things are calmer and talk about it. And you'll see that you'll be able to, to solve the problem. Who has heard of this um, glamour model called Jordan, Katie Price? Who has heard of her? Have you heard of her? Okay. I have nothing against her. I just want to give you an example. So, just giving you an example, this, uh, this lady, Katie Price, recently she had her third broken marriage. In fact, her third husband cheated on her in her house with her two best friends, who were not really best friends, because best friends don't do that, right? And this, the, you know, three broken marriages, if you, if you have three broken marriages, you stop and you think, what am I doing wrong? Would you do that? What am I doing wrong? What could I, ch I, I maybe I need to change something. Maybe something's wrong. And she gave an interview a couple of weeks ago and she said, because of my third broken marriage, what I'm going to do in December is I'm going to have a seventh boob job. You know what a boob job is? Breast implants. Because that is the problem that she has, right? That, is that why her relationships haven't worked? I don't think so. That's the seventh. And a lot of times, what do people do? My relationship didn't work. I had a broken relationship. I had a broken, I was dating someone, the person left. Maybe I need to change my style. I need to change my look. I need to put more makeup. I need to wear designer clothes. I need to do this. And you don't need to do that. You need to learn to act your faith. That's what you need to do. How was your relationship? Uh, very bad. Uh, we are separated. Uh, used to come and see just our daughter. Uh, we're not living together. We used to fight, argue, uh, aggressive towards each other. Well, it was... How long had you been separated? We separated for nearly a year. And you, you had been having a relationship for how long? How long had you been together? Well, we've known each other, been together on and off for about eight years. Eight years. But you weren't married, you were, things were aggressive. How were you, Gary, before you, before you came here now on the, in the church? Um, well, you know, I didn't have a real direction. You know, I fought on new people who, who I fought with my friends. Um, you know, I never really went to church or spoke about the church. The closest I've ever saw church was watching Sunday praise on a Sunday. That's the closest I ever got to a church. And that, and that was at home, right? That was at home when I was younger. But, um, you know, seeing the changes that I saw in Carla, the changes, I thought, you know, I need to go and see how they're making her change like this. So because she, she had the peace we were talking about, then he came. You guys got married very recently. How, how long ago? Uh, so it was uh, in September, 20th of September. Are you still in honeymoon? Uh, yes. <laughs> how, how is the relationship now that you are both in the faith, that you received the result of your sacrifice in the campaign? How is the relationship now? Uh, he's, uh, he's blessed, he's lovely. Uh, we don't mean we don't have no problems, but it's, we sort it differently. Nothing like used to be before. And we there for each other and for our, our family. No more aggressiveness, nothing like that? No, everything's a lot calmer and we feel blessed with our marriage at the moment. At the moment and forever. And forever yes. As long as you stay in the presence of God, right? Let's see the thermometer of the relationship, the kiss. Go ahead. M. This thing here is a weapon. Nero is a weapon. And you who are married, you who are thinking about getting married, you need to understand this, that when you get married, 
you're going to be getting a mirror and you're going to be looking in the mirror every single day. What do I want to say by that? Very simple and an advice to all of you. When you are um, fit, you have no problem in looking at the mirror, right? Yes or no? So if you consider yourself fit, actually you spend a lot of time in front of the mirror. But when you are a bit overweight, you do have a fight with the mirror, right? Mirrors don't lie, right? I'm sure that some of you have had the desire to break the mirror. Mirrors don't lie. They show who we are. And when you get married, you who are married, you are having problems in your marriage, difficulties in your relationship, or you who are about to get married, you who are thinking about getting married, you need to know that, that your partner will help you to see things in you that you couldn't see when you were alone. That while single, you would never have noticed. But once you are with someone, this person will make you see things that you couldn't see about yourself. For example, you being a selfish person as a single man, who cares? You are selfish. You don't have to share things with anybody. You live on your own. You do the things the way you want. But you are selfish. So you don't see yourself selfish because you don't share with anybody. You have no problems with anybody. But the moment you marry, the moment you, the moment you enter in a relationship, trust me, that person will work as a mirror and will help you see what you couldn't see about yourself. Which is good in one way. Why? Because if you are honest and you really want to change, when you look in the mirror, you see that there are few extra pounds there. So what do you do when you recognize that you are overweight? You can change the mirror, right? Like that pastor. Actually, some people do that with their partners. They change their partner. So they say, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to be with you because of this. You keep talking about me. You keep saying this about me. You keep saying that I'm this, I'm that. So some people, they want to get rid of the mirror because it's easier than to really realize or recognize that there are some extra pounds there, which means there are things that need to be changed. So a relationship is exactly this. So my wife is a mirror to me. I've seen things in me uh, after marrying her that I couldn't see before. And vice versa, of course. Remember, Bishop Renato said once that um, after he got married to Miss Christiane, after a few years, that he realized that he was, um, he used to shut down, which means when, when they had an argument, he would get angry and, and not stop talking to her. He couldn't realize that while he was single. As a single person, he was working on the altar. He was doing things. But when he married her, in other words, she made him see things about himself that he, wouldn't see, that he couldn't see before. And this is the, is the beauty of a relationship. This is the beauty of a marriage. I mean, I, I see things that I need to change, and I change to please that person. And of course, if, I, if she is a mirror to me, I am also what? A mirror to her. And what is marriage? What's a relationship all about? It's one trying to do what? To please the other. So when I see through her my mistakes, how it is affecting her, how it is... Uh, making her sad, unhappy, and I realized who I am and what I do, then I want to change. Then I decide to change in order to please her. 
And if she does the opposite also to me, the same to me, then that's when relationships work. So don't break the mirror. Don't break the mirror. Actually, don't they say that if you break a mirror, it gives you bad luck? Huh? So some people, they do that, right? Seven years of bad luck. <laughs> so don't break the mirror. Don't look at that person. You know, there are some men who are like that, and women as well. They see themselves there, and they don't like it. So what do they do? They punch the mirror. They mistreat the mirror. They break the mirror. Some replace the mirror, right? They change the partner. But if you are wise, what do you do? You pay attention to the mirror because mirrors don't lie. What you see is what you've got, right? They say, oh, t television makes you fat. You are fat, my friend. That's why, <laughs> that's why you look like that. Oh, this mirror here, some things... That's who you are. Mirrors don't lie. A proper mirror does not lie. If I see here, there are some, how do you say, wrinkles? Wrinkles, yes, there are wrinkles. That's it. So what do you do? Don't get angry at it. Don't beat it, beat it up. Don't break it and don't exchange it. That mirror is showing you who you are. Change it. Because if I change, if I lose those pounds, what's going to happen? When I come back to look myself at the mirror, I won't see that anymore. Because mirrors will not lie. So you are not an enemy. You should not be an enemy of the, of the mirror. The mirror is your friend. Your partner is your friend. Your partner is the person who cares about you the most in this world. After God, it's your partner, it's your husband, it's your wife. So don't break the mirror and don't exchange it. Look at it with humbleness and what you see there that's not good, change it. By doing that, that's how your relationship will last. So don't wait for the other partner, for the other person to start the peace process. If you start first, then you are the blessed one. Blessed are the peacemaker. Put all this into practice and your relationship will last forever. And be humble. We were watching a, a, a video today, a meeting today, and I was speaking to someone this week, someone who's having problems in the relationship and so on, and I said, the secret is for you to be humble. Recognize your mistakes. Recognize that the mirrors, mirrors don't lie. Be humble. If you need help, you seek help. No matter how, how rich, how successful you are here right now. I see some men here well-dressed. And, you know, men that you say, wow, this man is really successful in his life. Maybe a businessman, women, some of you are, are dressed very, very beautifully here tonight. We look at you and, wow. You really took the red carpet seriously, right? <laughs> and some people, because of that, or some, some, some of you are like that, very successful in your field, uh, your career, and so on. But if you were sick right now, very sick, if you were in pain, physical pain, if you started vomiting out, if you started feeling an uncontrollable pain at this moment, what would you do? Would you keep your um, smile there? You keep your... Huh? Po or pose? Pose. Keep your pose there a bit. Would you do that? I saw someone, I don't remember who it was, someone running to the bathroom there the beginning of the meeting, and, and I, I heard her, I saw her running there, and I just heard that noise. Ah! Don't remember who it was, that side there. Which means, dressed nicely, you don't care. If you were in pain right now, you would run to a doctor. And if the doctor tells you, 
take off your clothes, lie down here, do this. You will do whatever the doctor tells you to do. Why? Because you believe that he knows better. And if you don't do that, you can die, physically speaking. Don't be proud in your relationship. Don't be proud in your love life. Don't be like those people who wait for things to be unbearable and get into the point of no return so that you can seek help. Don't be proud. Be humble. If you need help, seek help. No matter who you are, speak to people who can help you. Be humble. This is for me. This is for you as well. This is for all of us. We do not know everything. Right? There are, there are always people who know better than us. Or not. There are always. Always people who know what we do not know. So seek help in the right way, in the right place.